you could see black smoke all over the place and I see the sickly burning smell of flesh would drift across the whole area and the screaming that was coming out of there was simply impossible, you can't describe that. Rini Salt was barely a teenager when she witnessed mass murder in the gas chambers at Auschwitz. She's 85 now, but the cruelty is still vivid in her nightmares, as are the parents she lost. They were sent to the camp together by train with thousands of other Polish Jews. They unbolted the doors, the screaming and bellowing, get off the train, get a move on, be quick. My father jumped off the train and I jumped after him. By the time I jumped off, I didn't see him anymore. He did, without a kiss, without a goodbye, he disappeared like into thin air. I never saw him again. Rini moved to England after the war. Only recently, with fellow survivors at the Jewish Care Holocaust Center, did she feel able to share her story, like what happened on her first day at Auschwitz. At the head of the queue, a selection process was being conducted by the infamous Dr. Mengele, the butcher of Auschwitz, we learned later. Wherever he saw two people holding hands, he would deliberately split them up. With a flick of his finger, he directed one to the right, one to the left, one should to, 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 be, to die and one to live. Those judged by the Nazis to be fit for manual labour were sent to live in these huts, crammed in in their hundreds. It's below freezing, but Rini and the other prisoners were given just pyjamas to wear, no underwear, no shoes. Each day they were given vegetable soup and mouldy bread to survive on. You can't imagine what it means to go hungry. I don't mean just go hungry, but really starving. Your eyes go round and round, you know. You can't see properly from hunger. We never believed we'll ever come out alive of there. From one hour to the next, we didn't know. When the Soviet army arrived at Auschwitz 70 years ago tomorrow, there weren't many prisoners left. The Germans were retreating, and Rini and her mother had already been forced to walk to another camp. Her mother died days after that was liberated. It's for her and all the other victims that Rini wants to commemorate this anniversary. So many didn't survive, and I did. So it is my duty to tell people what happened and go back and educate people. She knows it will be a painful trip, but it's one she has to make.